show on the planet even the other stations are tuned in too. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of Paranormal Buzz Radio or its sponsors. Use of any materials produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is strictly prohibited. For information on everything Paranormal Buzz Radio has to offer, visit our website, paranormalbuzzradio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Into the Abyss with Peggy Gypsy. Peggy comes from a long line of spiritual mediums. She is also an afterlife researcher, a paranormal investigator, and she mixes her skills with her special gifts in order to seek knowledge of the unknown, paranormal, and metaphysical. Join Peggy live on Spreaker, Saturday nights, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, for some great conversation with awesome guests and some fun along the way. Be sure to follow Peggy's social media on Periscope, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For all of Peggy's sponsors, check out the links in the description. Here's your host, Peggy Gypsy. Hello, hello, beautiful souls. How is everyone doing on this beautiful, cold, cold Saturday night here in Buffalo, New York? Um, Yeah, you know, here in Buffalo, it's been kind of crazy. You know, we've been getting ice storms. We've been getting snowstorms and windstorms. So I'm kind of... I'm kind of over the whole weather and what's going on here. I'm like, oh my gosh, can I be in the sun somewhere in an awesome island and just chilling on the beach? That's all I want today. <laughs> you know, I've spoken to a couple people today and um, I spoke to my sister. She lives out in California and her and her husband are telling me how, you know, it's raining and I'm like, oh my God, I will take California weather any day, any time over the weather here in Buffalo, New York. So yeah, so this is the first time that I'm actually going to be doing audio for um, on Periscope. So Periscope people will be able to see me, but they will only be able to hear my guest. And yes, Dan is on Periscope right now. He did help me set it up. So thank you, Dan. Um, Hey guys who are on Periscope. Thank you for tuning in. So let's see, let's see. So about, I think it was about a week ago, for people who have listened to my show prior or have listened to me be a guest on other people's show, I always ask the same question. I always say, who is your paranormal crush? And people go crazy with it. You know, some people don't want to answer the question or they're just kind of like, oh my God, I don't know. You know, so it's kind of funny. So I decided to do a poll on Facebook and on Twitter. So let's see, let's see. So I'm going to read the poll for Twitter first. So I put, who is your paranormal crush on Twitter? And <laughs> Shay's on the chat on speaker and she says, yep, that is me. Because <laughs> that is funny. You know, I, I was in her show um, last month. Yeah. And I asked her the question to her and Callie and they were so stumped and, you know, I did my whole thing where I'm not going to answer the question, but you girls answer the question. So it was, you know, it was kind of funny. It was, you know, I was laughing. So yeah, the poll on Twitter. So I put Zach Bagans, Nick Groff, Steve Gonzalez, and Chris Smith from TWC. So this poll went on for about, (laughs) it went on for about a week on Periscope. I'm sorry, on Twitter. And the results were... 58% of people on my Twitter, because not all of Twitter, of course, you know, I don't have that many people following me, which people should be following me, Uh, 58% voted for Zach, 22% voted for Nick Groff, 
14. I don't know why I'm laughing. It's so funny because if you could see me, I'm like kind of blushing as I'm reading this. So if you're on Periscope, you're kind of getting like the fun part of me kind of blushing right now. So it's kind of funny. So we're <laughs> 14% said Steve Gonzalez and 6% said Chris Smith from Tennessee from the TWC guys. So I did the same poll on Facebook and it kind of had to change it because Facebook only lets you put two people at a time and then people, you know, oh, Shay voted for Peggy Jips. I love you. Then, you know, some people um, were kind of upset that I didn't include any females in this whole para crush. Now, it could be that you think the person is hot. It could be a para crush as in you would love to investigate with them or you think their personality is awesome. It doesn't have to be like, you know, you're trying to go on a date with them or whatever. So on Facebook, I put Amy Allen and Katrina. And 60, let's see. Oh, I'm just going to give, for the girls, I'm just going to give the two winners. I'm not going to say who they were against. So the first winner was 63% Amy Allen. The second winner for the females was Katrina with 67%. And then I did Facebook. The winner was 58%. Mike Goncalves from TWC, Chris Smith from TWC, and 88% of people on my Facebook voted for Nick Groff. So that was kind of cool just to Nick Groff at the... <laughs> Hinsdale Girl on Periscope says, Nick Groff all and all. That is so funny. I know, I know. I'm like, you know, it, it's kind of controversial because I, I love to see what people are going to say, you know, and what they're going to put out there. So it was kind of interesting how many people had different, you know, different tastes and different people that they wanted to investigate with. But overall, the winner for Twitter was Zach and the winner for Paris for uh, Facebook with 88 percent of the votes was Nick Groff. So that was kind of cool. I just kind of. Yeah, you know, I put a lot of people and I started getting messages, people saying like, oh, you forgot this person and you forgot that person. And you, some people were actually taking it serious. And I'm like, guys, this is just a fun poll. Um, this will be every time that I have a show on, I will go ahead and do silly polls like that just to kind of see what everybody thinks. And, you know, everybody's going to get a chance. There's so many amazing people right now in the paranormal world. You know, people who are on TV shows or just people who... They're not on TV and, you know, they're just doing the convention scene and just Facebook is smarter. <laughs> Somebody, <laughs> Shay, you, you know, you know, I know, uh, I know, I know. You think Facebook people are smarter with their votes. <laughs> but it's kind of cool just to kind of see where people are at and who they're, you know, they vote for. And, you know, guys, I, trust me, the next one is going to be more people, people that I didn't put, because I don't want to just keep putting the same, you know, the same people on the list. I will, you know, pull people who are on shows, people who are not on shows, people who have a huge fan base. And, you know, I'm curious to see what your votes are. So that's kind of interesting. You know, people ask me, they send me messages like, oh, who did you vote for? Since it's my poll, I'm not going to vote for anybody. I stay neutral on everyone. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Let me just real quick go on Periscope and look at Nick Roth. Oh, yes, they should. Okay. So, yeah, just I just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors, Crescent City Conjurer. Their Facebook is Crescent City Conjurer website crescentcityconjure.us and they're located at 2402 Royal Street in the most beautiful city in the world at least for me New Orleans Louisiana um just give me one second I'm getting our guest that's going to be on just one quick second here So yeah, guys, I'm super excited over it. And yeah, so it is Royal Street in New Orleans, Louisiana, and also Colorado Paratech. Their Facebook is Colorado Paratech, and they're what they actually are the creator of the Ghost Light. So it's pretty pretty cool. So let's see what's going on over here. 
we're ha it seems to be that we're having some technical difficulties, but it's okay, we'll figure it out. And let's see what else. You know, I'm, I'm still laughing at the polls because I'm just looking down at my paper and looking at the numbers and, you know, and of that, of that list, there are people that I would have voted for, but you know, I take it to the grave. And let's see what else. Um, so let's talk about Mysterious Journeys. Uh, Lynn Chekai and I are the owners of Mysterious Journeys. It is an event company and we do paranormal events and it's gonna be, we're gonna be taking it all over the US. So, you know, follow us on Facebook at Mysterious Journeys and we're gonna be taking it all over the US so we may be in a city near you. Our next event, it's gonna be at the Statler which is tomorrow between 7 to 10 p.m. And we're very excited because we are going to take people all the way down to the pool, you know? If you guys watch uh, Paranormal Lockdown, you saw what awesome evidence they caught there. And we're gonna take this small group down to the pool, which I'm, also, I'm very excited. I've only been there once, and it was pretty, pretty crazy. I did get a lot of evidence. I, did hear a lot of footsteps and oh, I did see a shadow. It's very scary. So we're gonna take this group down to the pool. And the next event we have is Statler Psychic Fair, which is the following Sunday. And we're gonna be there doing the mini ghost hunts. So that's gonna be pretty cool too. So let's see what else. Yeah, and um, today's guest, um, it is the amazing Dave Spinks. Now, if you know anything about paranormal, you've heard this name. So my path and his path haven't crossed yet, but I'm sure that it will pretty soon. <laughs> and I'm just very excited to have him on the show, you know. One thing that I don't, don't like to do, I don't like to just sit here and read the history and everything that the person has done because I like to just them to come on the show and, you know, tell me about what they're doing, what events, and just kind of just get to know them. And I think that's pretty cool. And I'm very excited. I know he is in the car driving at this moment. So I don't know if it's how the audio is going to be because I kind of hear it kind of choppy. So, you know, hopefully he'll be able to do the interview. So let's go ahead and be, let's see if I'm able to bring him in. Just give me one moment. Hey, Dave, are you online with us? Yeah, it's All cutting right. in and out pretty bad. Oh, I can hear. Yeah, I can tell that you're still driving. I told I told yeah. you know, the listeners that you are driving, and you know that hopefully you don't get caught off. But so ho I'm hoping that we get you even just for a few minutes, you know, because I know you're on. Oh there. yeah, it should be. It should be okay. I mean. It's not the first time I've had to do it like this before. <laughs> I know, I know. You're a busy guy. You're on the road. And things happen <laughs> in life, you know, where you have to be on the road. Now, I was telling them that, you know, like, I've, you've, you and I have never crossed paths. But it's like you've crossed paths with everybody in my circle. So it's, you know, at some point, we're going to have to work together. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm sure. like, you know, I'm tired of hearing, you know, oh, you know, from my friend Sean Austin being like, oh, I'm going over here. We're going to Virginia. And we're doing this. And I'm like, when am I ever going to meet this guy? Oh, my gosh. So now, yeah, I'm very excited to have you. You know, you've been around for a very, very long time in the paranormal field. And I'm just so excited that you're doing my show. Now, for those people who don't know you very well, uh, like my sister who's on, <laughs> and she's not really into the paranormal, can you just give us a quick, you know, background, like when you started, what got you into the paranormal, and, you know, where you're at at this point in your career? Uh, yeah, I started back when I was a young man because I had a, an experience with my grandfather in West Virginia when, I, when we were fishing back in 83 and uh, really didn't start. I mean, that's what got me going into it. But, you know, uh, and, and another instance when uh, something to do with my other grandfather, I saw him the night he died and didn't know he was dead. And ever since then, I've kind of researched and, and, you know, checked into different aspects of the paranormal. And then as I got older, I got more and more into it and started investigating people's homes and other locations as well. And 
uh, and not just you know hauntings, but all aspects of it. People would report, you know, get a hold of me and say, "Hey, I saw something I couldn't explain in the sky, or I saw a strange creature in my yard, whatever the case may be." And I'd go out there and interview them and talk to them, and one thing led to another. And then when I was in the military, I did some stuff over uh, when I could. When I was off, I got to do some uh, pretty cool investigations over in Italy oh, and uh, all around uh, Europe. You know, I did several locations there. And, and then when I came back home, I kept doing it off and on. And then I was working in law enforcement, so I didn't get to do it very often then but because my schedule was so crazy but i kept on doing it here and there and yeah. and now that i'm retired i do it all the time as a hobby you know it goes going crazy oh, wow. <laughs> you know you, you sound just oh. like tim shaw i'm retired i'm dying listen I am, i'm not gonna say my age because you know us women we don't say our age but i am looking forward to retirement like that's one thing that I am. I'm like, when can I retire? And, you know, still have a long way to go. Now you said that um, you got interested when you were on a fishing trip. What happened in that fishing trip that kind of sparked that interest? Well, I've told that story a, a hundred times. I've told it on TV as well. <laughs> um, wrote it in my book, and um, basically the, the long and short of it is, me and my grandfather were fishing. Uh, and at one of our favorite spots and we had an encounter with the only thing I can describe as a Bigfoot. So, and it was throwing big rocks at us from across the other side of the river. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> but I, you know, if you want to read the whole story, you can get my book and read it like that. And, uh, yeah, yeah. and then, uh, the story I told on TV, um, uh, you know, they added a few things that didn't happen and, mm -hmm. Uh, change stuff around, but the real stories in the book, and that's TV for you. You know, they they Hollywood oh, yeah, fight as I, yeah, as I call it. But you know, I'm always um, honest about it, and I'll tell people, hey, that didn't happen that way. That's TV stuff for you. Mm -hmm. But they did a good job overall. You know, um, they just added a few things and changed a few things uh, around. You know, and that's what they do in TV. Oh, so. Of course. Now, what show was that that they, if so, people can Google um, it and watch it? Terror, Terror in the Woods, it was called. And then they also changed the name and put it on Travel Channel under These Woods Are Haunted too, as well. So it was on both channels, Destination America and Travel Channel. Oh, wow. Uh, nice, nice. So, um, yeah. And then, like I said, though, the real stories in my book, you can get it off Amazon. Um, it's called West Virginia Bigfoot. And it not only has my encounter, but it has all kinds of encounters from all kinds of folks all around the state, to include state troopers, law enforcement, other law enforcement officers, and uh, teachers, lawyers, you name it, uh, yeah. has a whole bunch of encounters, you know, just around the state of West Virginia. So I'm not very knowledgeable with the whole, you know, with Bigfoot now. My question, it's going to sound kind of dumb, you know, but it's coming from someone who knows nothing about Bigfoot. Is so there is there one Bigfoot or is there or do you think that there's many Bigfoot in different in different places? Oh yeah, obviously it has to be more than one. I mean, there's not just one that everybody's seeing on all over the world. <laughs> I know, so, and I just wonder, like, know. how many Bigfoots are out there? You know, like, geez. Yeah, well, it is what it is. It's just another aspect of the paranormal. Nobody knows what it is for sure. There's no solid proof of it. No, no body has ever been captured. Do you think they're uh, aliens? That they're aliens well, that's that one of the, the form that's that one of the yeah, that's one of the theories. Um, some folks believe they're some type of interdimensional creature. Some folks think they're an alien. Some folks think they're the missing link between man and ape. You know, but there's no body out there to prove it. So yeah. you know, it is what it is for now, anyway. But you can't discount the thousands of reported sightings of these things all around the world. Of so. course, yeah. I mean, people, you know, people are seeing Bigfoot. It's just matter of fact, like how you stated, there is no, there's not an actual body. So that kind of makes it hard to prove. Yeah, and there's all kind of um, supposed evidence that has been collected now. You know, there's some pretty, there's some pretty good evidence as far as foot tracks that actually have, uh, you know, they experts, foot foot experts, and actually fingerprint experts have got. Uh, specimens of foot tracks that have been casted that have very good proof of the metatarsal break is different than humans. The ridges on the, the dermal ridges on the feet, um, 
are different that differ from humans oh, you know and they and they they've got a lot of good proof but not solid proof of a whole body and dna yet now there's all kinds of people that have claimed to send in dna samples and they mm-hmm. mysteriously disappear so oh, whoa yeah you know <laughs> Sounds like a government conspiracy and people disappearing, you know? Right. Wow, that is crazy. Now, I have a question for you from Periscope. It's from Bobby Merritt. She says, talk to him about Willow's Weep and the Paracon there coming up, and what is he doing with the house? (laughs) Ah, That was a good question because I got to (laughs) laugh. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're doing a um, event at that house later this summer, uh, at June 21st and 22nd. It'll be uh, me, David Weatherly, and the Godfather himself, John Zaffis. Uh, we will be doing a VIP night on Friday night where we will investigate the house with 20 lucky people. And uh, oh, wow. then, then Saturday, um, we're having a speaking event where it'll be us three, of course, and then and then it will be um, it'll be uh, Barry Gaunt, who is a they call him the Kentucky Truth Seeker. He's been in the paranormal for many years as well. Um, big MUFON and UFO guy. Uh, we have the original Paris Sisters will be speaking that day, oh, wow. um, and they're from Indiana, up in that area, and they they were the first people to ever investigate that house uh, when it came online to investigate. Yeah, and then um, and they got some really amazing evidence uh, there as well, and then we have uh, Kristen Lee, the owner of the Belair House, as well, speaking with us oh, at that nice, event. Nice, nice. Now, so, will those twenty people will they able will they be able to stay on the property, or is that's not an overnight event, just a paracon? Mm, well, that's a VIP ghost hunt. They'll be able to ghost hunt with us for the majority of the night. Yeah. And then Saturday is an all-day speaking event with all those folks speaking. So you have to buy tickets. Tickets will go on sale soon in the next couple of weeks. Oh, cool. So. Well, yeah, I'll definitely share that. We have uh, another question from the chat room and on um, speaker. It says, have you ever been scared of a ghost? Like, was there something that you saw in investigation or just in your normal day life that kind of spooked you? And what was that experience? Uh, I wouldn't. I don't know. I mean, there's been a couple of times where I've been scratched and stuff by things you can't see during an investigation. That's pretty. That's pretty unnerving when something yeah. you know, does that to you. Yeah. But um, as far as scared, no. I mean, I go. That's what. That's what we're there for. We're trying to try to find a proof or evidence of these things. That is true. We have another question. Um, they're just, oh my God, you're getting so many questions. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we have Shay. She has a show on Paranormal Buzz Radio. She is my boss. <laughs> um, she wants to know, what is your favorite location or the best data that you have captured thus far? Oh man, there's a bunch of them um, that have, you know, given some really amazing results. I have to put... Um, I have to put Trans Allegheny uh, as one of my top uh, locations here in West Virginia. Um, that place is just amazing. Um, also, um, the West Virginia Penitentiary, uh, I've co- gathered some pretty amazing ev- evidence at that location as well. And it seems with me, since I'm, you know, retired law enforcement, that I, when I go to these prisons and jails, I, I usually get some pretty Ooh. just <laughs> crazy stuff because they don't like me, you know, and they know <laughs> that I'm ex law yeah. enforcement. Yeah. And me and my cousin, I used to, I used to have a team that I ran with my cousin who's still active, dude. He's still active as law enforcement officer. And, um, we when we would go to the jails and prisons, man, we would just get some phenomenal stuff. I mean, we would literally get cussed out loud where you could hear it with your own ears. Things pounding on doors. Can't we had a camera fly across the room when nobody was near it and smash one time at the pen. Um, just uh, you know, and and that's happened several stuff like that's happened numerous times when I, when we've been in these jails and whatnot. Oh wow! Yeah, I um. Last summer, and that that just that to me that proves that some of these uh, hauntings are intelligent in nature. Oh, because, yeah. 
you know, we'll pull out, you know, we pull out our badges or whatever, and we say, hey, you know, you know, and we'd start yelling commands like we did when we were actually working, you know, and they would just, I mean, it would set them off, you know, so that just proves that it's, uh, some of these things are intelligent in nature, and they can interact with them. Yeah, they definitely can. I, the only person that I've been to thus far is, um, I went to, I was down in Petros, Tennessee, in Brushy Mountain. And oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember, like, when we went up there, I was like, oh, like, for me, I'm a psychic medium. And I was like, you know what? I don't feel that it's haunted. I'm not feeling anything. You know, so the whole time, I'm just kind of like, I don't know about this location. And then we finally walk into, like, the actual prison buildings. And as soon as I walked in there, I felt like I didn't know if they wanted to rape me or chop my head off. It was just that kind of yeah. feeling. Like, it was, like, the whole time. And I remember, Probably both. Yeah, and I wear, <laughs> right? I wear a uh, St. Michael's uh, pendant on, you know, my, my necklace. And I remember it was like just faintly touching the necklace and just rolling it back and forth the whole time I was there. And I'm like, oh, they just kept like trying to taunt me. And, and it's just kind of crazy how they are intelligent and they know that we are there. And it's oh, oh yeah, it's just crazy. I remember the whole time I was just that's one of the places that I felt. I'm not gonna say fear because you know we put ourselves in these situations to investigate the unknown, but it was kind of like that uneasy feeling. It was just oh yeah, yeah. It was very uneasy. You know, it was my first time ever in any kind of prison, so you know it was just kind of like oh, oh 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 yeah. Prisons are very dark and negative places. Yeah. You know, there's a- lot of bad energy there yeah i was like whoa this is different than just walking into you know even an asylum or you know just haunted home it was just such a dark menace like sinister energy it was ugh, it was really bad yeah so let's absolutely see. we have a question from periscope what state do you think is the best for a bigfoot hunt, um, hunting um, well, there's several, really. I mean, I call West Virginia the Pacific Northwest of the East Coast when it comes to strange creature sightings. I mean, um, I've got enough now to, you know, do several books on, on this subject. But, you know, of course you have, you know, Washington State on the West Coast, Oregon, Northern California is a big hot spot. Um, even Oklahoma and North Texas and East Texas have a lot of, uh, a lot of sightings of Bigfoot. Um, Florida is another one for the skunk ape down south. Georgia, Florida, uh, wow. uh, South, even South Carolina. There's been a rash of reports recently in, in southern South Carolina. Um, anywhere, basically anywhere where there are large uh, wooded regions and mm-hmm. rural areas, you can find reports of Bigfoot. North Alabama. Um, another hot spot, you know, uh, I mean, there are South Alabama as well. There's just uh, Tennessee. I mean, Kentucky. I mean, there's so many. And of course, Canada has a whole bunch of sightings as well. So, we have you know, large in New York. Yeah, there's a few in New York. Yeah. Oh, wow. Anywhere where there's, you know, it seems like the more uh, vast wooded regions where people aren't as much, you know, you're going to have, um, it's more apt to be, uh, more sightings reported in those areas. Yeah. But there are a lot of reported sightings in, um, suburban areas too, where people live, you know, so you just never know, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's what makes like when, when you say things like that, like suburban areas, I'm like, you know, that's what makes me think it's some sort of alien. And that's how, they come here to see what's going on, and then they just boom disappear. And they well, go back there's, to where there's they a, go. that's a good point you brought up because there's a lot of uh, UFO reports that, that coincide with Bigfoot sightings as well as vice versa. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people that have reported seeing a, a Sasquatch and then seeing lights in the sky, or vice versa, seeing the lights in the sky and then seeing a Bigfoot. Yeah. So yeah. you know we don't know. You know. It's, it's a, there's a lot of different theories on it. Wow, that's so interesting. Uh, we have a question from Par- I've never had so many questions. Jeez, you're a popular guy. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a question from um, on Paranormal Buzz Radio, and they want to know 
Does it help being a retired law enforcement? Do you think that helps you with the investigation aspect of it? Or do you think that kind of, you know, sets you back a little bit when you're going into oh, investigation? Oh, no. No, I think that having that background uh, actually enhances my uh, insight and my, um, my investigative background. You know, I mean, that it gives me a different way to look at things, a different way to approach things. Yeah. Um, you know, especially like if I'm interviewing people, um, because I interview, you know, I would interview uh, suspects and criminals inside the prison system. Yeah. So I, I have a unique perspective and I will ask people the same question when I interview them many times over, but in a different way to see if oh, I can wow. catch them lying, you know, uh, see if you can catch them lying or, or making up stuff. Because let's face it, you know, to, in today's world, you know, there's a lot of people that will make up stuff and try oh, to, to try, try to get on TV or whatever. And all the a lot of these Bigfoot sightings and pictures and videos are hoaxed, you know. Yeah. And with with today's CG, um, a lot of fakery can go on, you know. So it's really hard to um, discern between the the real deal and that because with CG the way it is now, you know, if if we have if you have something that looks really good, you know, you want to send it into an expert, have them see yeah. if they if they can uh, debunk debunk it and see if it's been uh, if the video has been altered in any way. And that's the same thing with haunting. You want to do that as well. I mean, you're right about people. You know, somebody's like, "Oh, he must have a great bullshit meter." I'm like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> you probably can tell when people are bullshitting you when they're telling you these stories. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, you know? And it's the same thing. You know, people will send pictures in to me all the time. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And I said, "Well, that's a cool capture, but you know, if I'm not there, I can't really make a determination on it because yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't know all the factors. You know, I don't know the lighting, what camera they used, whatever." Mm-hmm. And I, basically, all you can tell them is, hey, it looks that's a cool capture. Yeah. Because <coughs> yeah. literally, I do not have the time to check hundreds of pictures that I get sent every month. Hey, look at this. What do you think about this? You know? Yeah. It's funny how people do that. You know, like, I get stuff like that in my inbox. Like, oh, can you tell me if this doll is haunted? I'm like, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> can you please, And, and you don't know? get me wrong. I love when people share stuff with me like that. I mean, that's that's all part of it. Love to hear yeah. the stories. I yeah. love to hear people's experiences, but, you know, I can't make a determination on yeah, stuff that's like what that I if I'm not them. there. I'm like, you know, sometimes yeah. you know, I, I can get a feeling and I'm like, well, you know, this is what I'm picking up. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's 100 percent because the item is not, you know, in front of me. And sometimes I don't pick up anything. Uh, somebody wants to know, have you ever had an attachment? Has yeah. Anything gone home <laughs> with you, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had, uh, after a, a case that I actually lived in a pretty well-known haunted house up in PA um, for over a month, and then I went back three more times and lived in it for two more weeks at a time. Oh, wow. uh, when I came back and it was over, I had, like, the worst year of my life. Oh, man. Um, had a lot of bad stuff happen to me and all kinds of stuff. Was it something but, that came home with you? But luckily, I had or? people that loved me and cared for me and got helped me out of the whole thing, and... Um, you know, had some stuff done and it all worked out. How long did it take for you to realize that you had an attachment? Um, about three, maybe two or three months. Yeah. And then I started figuring this, this isn't right. Something's not right. You know, well, you know, and had some, um, stuff done, you know, uh, with clergy and whatnot. Yeah. But, it, you know, I tell folks, you know, you got to be careful. You never know what you're going to get when you're doing this stuff. It can be dangerous. Mm-hmm. Um, every time can be different, and you don't know what you're going to be dealing yeah. with all the time. I completely believe that, you know. And prime, prime example is Bobby Mackey's. First time I was ever there, me and Sean were there together, and mm-hmm. we didn't we didn't get anything, like hardly. We got a few good things, you know, but yeah. nothing – you know how they talk it up, it's so negative and they, you know, it's got yeah, demons yeah. and all this stuff. But we didn't get anything. The second time I went there, it was off the chain. Wow. Third time I went there, it was kind of slow again. So you never know. You could go to a location many, many times um, and get, and you know, get nothing or get something, you know, get something crazy stuff. You just never know. That's, that's true. I mean, I've done investigations, like, where I go back to the same location. I'm like, wow. It was nothing going on tonight, like, you know, just like the minimal things. And then there's times that you go back and they're so active and so, 
you know, in your face with things. Like, oh, man. Then other times, you know, um, there's always, it seems like there'll be times when you're getting a lot of good stuff and you have a person come in the room. We call them energy killers. Oh, <laughs> man. I've been like, They'll here come comes in. the buzz killer. Just walked in and every yeah. whole, And it's crazy because it's like, you know, the whole, everything will change. The energy in the room and it's just yep. like radio silent and you're like can you please walk out like i'm so sorry <laughs> i don't think yeah, it, they happens. Like you. it happens you know like i don't think they like you you need to just you know and sometimes it's happened that it's me you know people will yeah. be in one room getting so much and so much and then it would be like witch or like you know b-i-t-c-h and then i walk in and they're like, oh, yeah. man, can you leave? And I'm like, wait, what's going on? What happened? And um, and sometimes, you know, like recently, uh, they get a little fresh. They're getting a little fresh. Oh, yeah. I, oh, like, yeah. Usually, like, when I started, it would just kind of be like, you know, just like your minimal stuff. And then now it starts, you know, saying my name at a different location. And then uh, I was really shocked when it said my last name. I was at Greystone Manor. And not a lot of people know my last name. And it said it on Necrophonic app. It said my last name. Mm-hmm. And I said, wait, what? What did you say? And it said it again. And I was just kind of like taken back. And ever since that experience, they're just getting a little very sexual and very nasty. Oh, yeah. They'll do that. Where I have to be like, hey, 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 boundaries. Like, cut it out. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to communicate. Ash- that's what I tell them. I talk to them like they're like I'm talking to you right now. I say, "Hey, boundaries. If this is how you're going to act, I want nothing to do with this and I will not communicate with you." But it's, you know, it's kind of funny. It's crazy what they do. Let's see if we have any more questions here. I think you're com- <laughs> Oh, there it is. There it comes. There we go. There we- I lost you for a second. <laughs> Maybe they didn't like me saying yeah. all these boundary stuff and they intercepted the line. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, I'm going to be nasty right now. <laughs> well, it happens. Yeah, it, it is. Ha- happens. You know, like the one that I've, I've been on uh, radio shows before and actually be heard of. Got some EVPs on an actual radio show. <gasps> Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to check this one out because it you were just coming in and out and oh let's see what people are saying. Uh huh, let's see, let's see. Gosh, there's so many questions. That is insane. Oh my god, so Shay she says, I was bent over stretching and the spirit box said, You whore. And I said, Did you just call me a whore? <laughs> But the funny thing is, like, I investigate a lot with Ling Chekai from, um, she's right now on Within These Walls on Space, and we investigate yep. a lot, and we're both single, so we're like the singles club, you know, and it'll be like, people will be like, who invested, do you think, do you want to date Peggy? Do you want to date Lynn? And they'll say no, and we're like, are you kidding me? We can't even get a, a spirit to date us, and we just laugh it off, because, you know, they're funny, and they're smart at times, and... It's kind of funny when you get, you know, evidence like that, you know, it's like, oh, great. Oh, yeah. The spirit wants to date us. <laughs> <laughs> so what events do you have coming up before, besides the one that you were just letting us know? Um, there's, in May, I have the uh, Bigfoot Camping Adventure in Pennsylvania. Um, that's a three-day event with a whole bunch of just a star-studded cast of people. Oh, <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Some of the biggest names in the cryptid world will be there. Um, I'm, I'm super stoked to be a part of that again for the second time in a row. Uh, you have uh, the likes of Rosemary Ellen Guiley, David Weatherly, a um, bunch of great speakers, and then a bunch of celebrity. Um, like uh, you have Cliff and Bobo from Finding Bigfoot will be there. Oh, cool. Uh, the, the mountain monster guys will be there. Just a, it's it's just going to be a phenomenal event. There'll be a lot of uh, actual uh, people going out, taking out you know, taking people out in the woods and doing oh, bigfoot wow. hunts and and, <laughs> and everything. <coughs> uh, excuse me, I have a cold. I'm haven't got over it yet. So oh, <laughs> it's I'm like, don't give me your cold through the phone. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then in. Um, uh, let's see, July, of course, got the Gettysburg event um, for Wounded Warriors. Oh, yeah. Uh, She's going to be on my show uh, the Saturday before the event. Yeah, super stoked to be able to always 
you know, proud to be a part of helping veterans. I am a veteran, so I love doing that. Yeah. Um, and then we have, I have another event in November and there's so, and there's several, there's another one in PA two coming up. Um, so there, I don't know, there's four or five events if you want to see them all yeah. and I'm adding events like monthly. So, Great. Uh, awesome. there, um, there will be, it'll be on my website as I get new events added. I will put them on my website. It's uh, www.davespinksparanormalinvestigator.com. And that has links to all my social media, my books, the movies I've been in, uh, the TV shows I'm filming, I'm filming in right now and mm-hmm. will be up soon. Can you let um, us know so, what TV shows you're filming or not yet? <laughs> what's that? Can you let us know what TV shows you're currently filming? Um, well, I filmed two different shows back in November. Mm-hmm. One has already aired in the UK and Canada. It's, it was called Paranormal 911. Okay. And I'm filmed for another show that will be on travel. Uh, I'm not going to give you the name, but you'll see me on several shows this year. So. Nice. Nice. Um, probably eight, at least eight different shows by the time the year's up. So. Wow, you're uh, busy. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's it's cool to be able to share my stuff and actually get some in uh, TV time, you know, yeah. investigating and whatnot. So, and there's a lot of surprises coming up, and um, I'm supposed to be in another movie with um, Seth uh, Breedlove later on in the year. So we'll see. But. Um, wow. But um, if you haven't seen the Flatwoods Monster movie by Small Town Monsters, I'm in that too. That was a really cool little documentary movie on that on that whole deal, and yeah. you can see that on Amazon or you can buy the DVDs, signed DVDs from me. And if you want to buy my signed books, you can buy one from me too as well, or you can get them all straight off of Amazon. But if they want the signed version, they have to go through your website, correct? Yeah, yeah. Just PayPal me and put your return address, and I'll sign one for you. And send it to you. So awesome! Wow, you know I've heard, of, I've heard um, about you for so long. Got a long. new. <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. Uh, <laughs> I got a new book coming out in the next two to six weeks. It'll be released by the publisher it's called Real West Virginia Hauntings, mm-hmm. Volume One. I'm doing a whole series of books on that, and that's Volume One. So I'm stoked about that. Wow, you are a busy, busy man. Wow. Uh, I've just got a lot of stuff over the years that I've, you know, been sitting on, and I'm now I'm putting it out there for people to share my experiences with, you know. Yeah. Wow. That's that's awesome. That is so awesome. Uh, you know, you had you so many questions. That was such. It's so awesome. People love you. It's <laughs> well, it's, thank you guys. I appreciate the support. You know, man. like we have Periscope going, and they just loving you, telling you hi. Let's see, someone was like, "Tell them I said hi." I always like to go and acknowledge. Oh, let's see, Mark J Diaz. It says, "Tell mm-hmm. Dave I said hi." What's going on? So yeah, people. What's are, up? What's up, everybody? <laughs> people are excited, and you know that you're on. And I know, you know, and you know, for those people who are listening to us, this kind of almost didn't happen because he is on the road. And you know, when people are on the road and have, you know, we all have our lives besides the awesome paranormal, or you know, we have our own personal lives. So uh, I, I try excited. to make it happen no matter yeah, what. <laughs> I, you know what? That shows your work ethic. Guys, I did message him and I said, hey, if you want to reschedule, like, I understand. It's okay. Things happen. And, you know, he was like, nope, we're going to do this. And I'm just kind of like, whoa, that's some amazing work ethics. And that's why you're very well respected in the community and why you've been around for so long. I've only missed one show I've ever scheduled. And that's because we had a power outage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you couldn't, you know, <laughs> you you couldn't, you know, you, you can't control yeah. that part. But you know, that just shows your work ethic and what kind of person you are. Uh, right. I like to share, you know, I like to share the paranormal, and I talk paranormal all night with folks. You know, it's fun. I know. It's interesting. It's fascinating yeah. stuff. So let's see. Um, what was the look? Well, I, I don't want to ask that because I I don't like putting locations out there like that but you don't have to say the location but what was the place that you went to that it was a big hype and there was nothing happened like what was that experience like you don't have to say that uh, 
Well, the thing is, like I said earlier, you know, you never know what you're going to get. And mm-hmm. that does, just because you go to a location and you don't get much doesn't mean it's not haunted, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there was a, a case on... You- there's a case you, on yeah. uh, GAC like that one time on TV, yeah. you know, and, and I had friends that personally lived in that location and investigated and got all kinds of really good stuff. But mm-hmm. just because it does, you don't get it on one particular occasion doesn't mean it doesn't have activity. It, they might just not want to talk to those particular yeah. people at the time. Yeah. You know, you, you just never know. But have you been somewhere that you felt like, oh, this is a pile of crock? Like, oh. Yeah, there. Yeah, there's. I've been to some residentials like that, and you know, you kind of figure there was one particular resident um, residential that was claiming all this crazy stuff. So, and we interviewed him, me and my cousin both, both law enforcement guys. We found him to be pretty believable, so mm-hmm. we went to his house. <laughs> and you know we did the standard initial stuff and we just were not picking up anything to like lead us to believe that it you know that it was a real deal and there was stuff going on so we sat down with the guy and we started just talking to him you know mm-hmm. and come to find out his uh his fiance had left him and he actually had tried to hang himself like a month before oh, wow. and he was just so <laughs> distraught over it. Um, the whole situation that he wanted someone to talk to and he made up this whole story about you know having hauntings going on and whatnot and he was uh, you know and we talked to him for two or three good hours and now that doesn't mean that some kind of negative influence was happening to him Mm -hmm. because of the because of the negative stuff he was experiencing in his life but the stuff that he was claiming, we just could not find any evidence of it whatsoever. So, and, um, you know, after we talked to him, I mean, he broke down crying and everything, and he was apologizing to us and everything like that. So, you know, sometimes if you can help people and it's not the paranormal, hey, that's a good thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. It is what it is. But there's a lot of locations out there that may make up a haunting just to get for money, you know, for business purposes. Oh, yeah, definitely. That is true. So, so now, you've been around for a long time. So, you know, how do you feel about, I think in the last five years, everybody claims everything is demonic. It's a demon. It's a demon. It's demonic. <laughs> it's this. Like, me personally, let me knock on wood for those people who can see me on Periscope. I'm knocking on wood right now. I have never encountered a demon. I've encountered... Yeah nasty asshole entities but right. not a demon and I just don't understand how people go around and everything is a demon everything is demonic how do you feel about how that whole demon and de- you know demonic hauntings have become so popular in like the last five years well that's mainly due to TV mm-hmm. okay everybody all these people out there that are so called investigators they want to get a TV show. Yeah. So they think they think that's the way to get it, to go darker and deeper. Mm-hmm. And they see what they see on TV. Yeah. And they, and they think that's, you know, that's what, what it is. And that's not it, you know. Yeah. I, I um, completely agree with that. <laughs> anyway. TV, was- is a, TV is a double-edged sword. It is, because people expect... You know, people expect that that's what we do, that you're going to walk into a location like on the TV shows and, you know, 10 minutes in, it's like, oh, it's a demon. Like, no, you know, spirits can be assholes, you know, like we have people living and are assholes. You could be like that in the spirit world. Doesn't mean that you're a demon. Doesn't mean absolutely demonic. Doesn't mean you need, you know, it's just TV has made it like almost like a soap opera. These TV shows at times and. Yeah, nine times out of ten, that's what it is. It's, uh, you know, it's not, uh, you know, if you talk to some of the the, the most well-known demonologists out there, a true demonic haunting is very, very, very rare. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, it tends to be just a negative. If You know, I, I, I would if a person was a, a, a D-bag when they were alive, not, yeah. if they're still hanging around when they're dead, then nine times out of ten, they're going to be a D-bag then, too. You know, mm-hmm. so, I that's, mean, you know, that's that just how it is. That is true. That is true. 
that is very very true so it's just i just get kind of weird like when people are like just they just throw that word around like so loosely and i'm like what there's no demons here like what are you talking and now oh, yeah. that i will confront you at the investigation and i'm like what are you where did you get that from you know like no there's bad entities here there's, yeah, bad so, uh, there's, a, but. there's a tv show on now that really cracks me up and it's not it's a uh, it's a newer show mm-hmm. every week it's in a demonic location and they're, they're saying stuff <laughs> like oh if it can move furniture it's a demon no that's not true no, it's not true, but it's like, not wow, true. you guys must be that good that every week yeah. you, have, you find a demon. Like, that's amazing. Like, you know, yeah. even demonologists, yeah. like, they can count the cases that were actual, you know, demons. Mm-hmm. And these yeah. TV shows, they go around and it's like, it's a demon. And sometimes it's like the worst DVP and you're like, really, really, really? It's a demon in the yeah, EVP, and, it, and it's like, you know yeah, what? There's a whole criteria that yeah. has to be met before it has to be a criteria, and it's like, you know, for people who investigate, you are going to get, they're going to say that they're a demon. They're going to say that they're the devil. Are they those things? No. So just because they say, I'm a demon, hell, you know what I mean? You can't be like, okay, yeah. it's a demon, stamp. And they'll tell you that. You know, there's spirits that will tell you that, too, just to try to scare you. Yeah, they do it as a scare tactic <laughs> for you. And I'm like, yeah, yeah okay. And, and you're a demon. You're wasting your time in telling me that you're a demon right now. Like, really? Yeah. You know, but it's... And people just take that and run with it. And I'm just kind of like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I had this one rookie... I had, we had this one rookie guy. We were out in California one time. And he had the nerve to say... Oh, well, I know what the, I know what a demon is because I watch Ghost Adventures, and I, Stop. you know, I just fell out of my. Ch- oh yikes! And you know, I'm just like, dude, you're so far clueless. You don't know what you're talking about. You know, yeah. you better just go get away from me because yeah. I'm about to school you here in a minute. Because <laughs> I suck. Well, I know Ghost Adventures. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, oh. it is what it is, you know, but. That's what pe- that's the bad thing about TV and the paranormal. Yeah. TV, it's for entertainment. It's just, you know, you guys got to remember that. Anyone listening? Yeah. Uh, and I'm not bagging on GAC. I think they do a good job on yeah, everything I mean, they do. But, they do a good um, job. It's TV at the end of the day, but, you know? Right, right. You know, you got to remember when folks are on TV, when they're on a show like that, they have to, you know, the production companies are spending tens of thousands of dollars mm-hmm. to do a production and they got to have results you have to. you know because they're they they're not just gonna you know they may go and not get anything legit but they got to have results you know mm-hmm. you know it's just it's the name of the game it's all about money when it comes to tv so you know it is what it is that is true and you know even like my mom like now throughout the year she kind of she knows what i do and stuff like that but you know at the beginning you know she would watch like ghost adventures and she will think that we would walk into a location and just get boom, boom, evidence, evidence, boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, Mom, do you understand that I can spend five, six hours in the dark and nothing happens? And then all of a sudden stuff starts happening. I'm like, right. it's not like back to back like how they show in these TV shows. I'm like, no. There's times when we yeah. just sit around looking at each other in the dark like, uh, did you hear something? Uh, that's, no, that's I mean, that's, that's why I say it's a double-edged sword, and, you know. Overall, you know, TV has made, uh, really brought the paranormal to the forefront, you know, and it's really, in the last 15 years, has really skyrocketed everything uh, as far as the paranormal. But at the same time, it's good for the paranormal, but it's also bad Mm -hmm. because, you know, people think they see what they see on TV is all real and legit. It's just not true. You know, you got to remember that. Now, do you think, like, because it has become so popular and it's like, it went from just a few people being investigators to now anybody who has a phone that can record becomes an investigator. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, how do you how do you see that whole shift the that's whole, going? The now? whole uh, the whole phone and um, apps thing yeah. is don't ever use those apps. They're not they're nothing but garbage. Okay. What do you use? Like, um, what is your like your go to equipment? Most of them, most of them have geolocators, you know, mm-hmm. and 
if you have all that turned on, it's going to spin. They're associated with where you're. Ooh, and it's kind of losing it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, I think I'm losing you. Okay, let's see, guys. Let's see. I'm kind of losing him, so let's see if he comes back on. He's trying to connect with him. I know he's on the road. So, uh, okay, you know, I completely I, I know lost he, you. I, but, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm here. Okay, so. Yeah, what's that? Okay, now you're here because we completely lost you. So, what is your go to equipment when you're investigating? Well, you can't go wrong with a recorder, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's tape or digital. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that. Um, of course, you want to use some EMF, to, you know, meters because mm -hmm. you want to you know, monitor the temperature, the EMF. And, you know, is that some of the best evidence? It still, it still can't... Uh, I think we're losing him again. Let's see if he comes back in, you guys. I feel terrible. He's driving, so he's probably, like, lost reception. Yep, I think he did. He lost reception. Okay. So, guys, um, thank you for tuning in today. This is That was really cool. I'm glad that, you know, he was still able to do the interview when he's on the road driving. <laughs> I don't know how safe is that. But up, uh, guys, make sure to check out my sponsors, Crescent City Conjure. Their Facebook is Crescent City Conjure. Website, crescentcityconjure.us. This is an awesome shop in New Orleans. I mean, the odor is amazing. He was on my first episode. Um, he does reading. They do um, Grigri. They do best. Um, they do everything and anything that you can think of. If you need help, you guys give them a call, and they're just... They're amazing, and they're located at 2402 Royal Street in Louisiana in New Orleans. Colorado Paratech, their Facebook is Colorado Paratech. They are the creator of the ghost lights, so if you need any lights, they are amazing. They're the people to go to. I, um, I'm actually waiting. He's building something for a few people, and then it's going to go out to the market, so he's going to send moi one of those items and I'm very excited to use it and yeah it's gonna make my life much easier so yeah man that was such an awesome show you know like I don't know much about you know Bigfoot and I just love like when people are like Bigfoot experts and they school me on things because I'm like so wait is there one Bigfoot or going around everywhere you know it's, it's amazing when the things that are out there you know that's why this show is called Into the Abyss because I want to be able I want to be able to go ahead and go into different topics and uh, different you know subjects and just kind of pick people's oh Kim Purvis says that, oh he's coming back let's see let's see you guys he is coming back let's see Let's see. Are you on the line with us? Oh. Yay, we got you back. Hello. Yeah, we really did lose you there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a dead spot. Yeah. So what I was saying, what I was saying was, you know, when you take, say, three pieces of equipment, you have an EMF meter with temperature readout, uh, recorder, and maybe, say, a rim pod or something, yeah. and you're getting hits, and you're getting hits on all that stuff at the same time, then you have to really sit back and take a look at that because mm -hmm. that's very that's very compelling, you know. Yes, it is. And and that's what you want to do as even if you're a novice or rookie investigator, you know, put all that together after you debunk everything of possible sources and causes. If you have two or three things that hit off like that, you really got to you really have something there. So yeah. that's what you want to you know. And you don't need, I always tell people, you don't need uh, all these fancy gadgets and stuff. Yeah, those are nice and fine and dandy, but you can go old school. You, know, you can use the old powder on the floor trick with a camera. Yeah. Um, you know, use a, use a, just a recorder and try to capture EVPs and, and just think outside the box when you're doing this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. 
you know, you don't need get expensive with all those fancy dollars. stuff out there. I'm like, you know, I go to the websites and I'm just like, geez, I can't afford, you know, <laughs> half of the stuff out there. But, you know, I always tell people the same thing. The K2s are amazing. You know, it's. It goes down. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you for being on today. I know you took time and you're driving and you have your family in the car and they're probably tired of hearing my voice. <laughs> I think <laughs> if I'm a speaker, thank you so much, family, for putting up with me for the past hour and letting him be on the show. I really appreciate that. And um, guys, make sure to check him out, check him out on Facebook. And uh, what is the website again that they can see your events and buy your book? www.davespinksparanormalinvestigator.com and then you can just type in my name and on Amazon and you can get the book from there or you can get it from me um, you can also get the movie from me um, on uh, PayPal as well if you want to sign a DVD of the Flatwoods Monster movie okay awesome and again thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful night and now go focus back on your family because I know they're in the car here. I hear a cute yeah we're almost getting home child. now so <laughs> I hear a cute child in the background <laughs> he's awesome yeah that's my daughter Oh, cutie pie Oh, that's so cute <laughs> but thank you so much for taking time to be on the show and you know the fans they appreciate it they were here for you and yeah have a wonderful wonderful night Hey, you too. Thanks for having me on. Anytime, just let me know. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. All right. Have a good night. Bye. Good night. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. It was amazing having you guys. For those people on Periscope, it was the first Periscope on. And it was amazing. You guys had awesome questions. People in the chat room and speaker.com thank you so much that was great you guys participated and made everything so much easier for me and um, you know I always like to end the show with some wise words you know be kind to one another kindness is free you never know the battles that other people are having and you know just be nice to people be nice to one another we live in such a crazy world where everyone is just so upset and so angry that they forget the beauty in life what's really important when you you know when you peel out the layers of you know bills and all these things you know there are, there is beauty in this world and be kind again be kind to one another don't get stuck in the gossip or the rumor mill just be a good person and again I will catch you my next show is going to be on February 23rd and it is the amazing Reverend Tim Shaw which uh going to be awesome for those guys who know Tim Shaw you know he's a hood he's a riot and we're going to have fun then after that for the month of March I have Ken Boggle on the show March 9th he is the host of Tarot Date with Ken Boggle on BD.space and you can also find his show on Amazon Prime make sure to go ahead and follow him and for those of you who know Ken Bogle, know that he is hilarious. He is sassy, hilarious, fun, and I love him. So, guys, thank you for tuning in. I hope everybody has a wonderful week, and I'll talk to you guys on the end of February. Have a great night, and thank you for tuning in.